Welcome to Juniper Learning Bytes. My name is Zach Gibbs and I am a content developer in education services within Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the Security Director Hub and Spoke VPN's Learning Byte. Alright, so to begin, let's look at an, an example topology. This is what we're going to be using in this Learning Byte. And so with the devices on screen, the HQ device is the hub. The branch 1 and branch 2 devices are the spokes. And each of those devices have an untrust and a trust zone. With the trust zone housing the users and the untrust zone pointing towards the internet. And each of those zones, as you can see, has one interface. And the idea of this learning byte is to create a hub and spoke VPN that will facilitate secure communication between the hosts at each site. So let's go ahead and jump right to the GUI to take a look at this. Alright, here's the GUI. And as you can see, we're in the VPN's workspace. However, nothing's configured. Uh, so before we begin configuring a VPN policy, let's jump to the VPN profiles. And uh, what a VPN profile is, is it allows you to specify the phase 1 and phase 2 parameters. And there's some predefined uh, VPN, VPN profiles. And there is a custom one that was defined earlier. And you can use a predefined one, however, before you do, I'd recommend that you come in here and check out to see what these uh, profiles are and see what's in them. You can see in this profile there's some phase one uh, parameters and there's some phase two parameters. But we're not going to use this profile. We're going to use this custom profile that was created earlier. And so we're going to edit this just to take a look at this, get a little more detail. You can see in here that we have, first we named it of course, and then we have the phase one parameters. We can select a pre-shared key or we can use RSA or DSA, things like that. We can set main mode or aggressive. We can set an IKE ID. We're going to stick with host name here. And then we can define some proposals. We can use predefined proposals that you can see a list in the drop down box here. Or we can define some custom proposals. With this, for the sake of time, we're going to stick with the predefined proposals. And then we have some advanced options such as NAT transversal keep alives and enabling uh, dead pair detection. Okay, so phase two parameters. Again, we have proposals. We could select predefined or custom. We do have the ability to uh, select perfect forwarding secrecy, which group we want to use for that, or we can select none. And then we have this established tunnel immediately, which is not checked by default. You have to check this. That will cause the tunnels to come up immediately. And then we have the don't fragment bent, uh, some options that we can set. We're just going to leave that at none. We have an idle timeout, install time, and we can uh, set to enable anti-replay. So we're not making any changes to that. I just wanted to show you that. Let's jump to the VPNs and create a new VPN. We're going to name this LB for Learning Bytes, Hub and Spoke. And then the first thing we have to decide, we have to decide the tunnel mode. We have route-based and policy-based. And with a an hub and spoke, route based definitely functions well. I, honestly, I don't think a policy based VPN would work with a hub and spoke VPN. I've, I've never actually tried that. So we're going to use a route based VPN. With a policy based VPN, that works great for things like a remote access VPN. And say you have a users working from home, they want to access corporate resources, you know, they could download and install the Pulse client or another VPN client, there are other ones that will work with it, that will open a, an IPsec session with your SRX device and allow them into your protected resources. But that's not what we're trying to do here. I just wanted to explain a scenario that you could use that. And so we're selecting route based and we're going to select hub and spoke and notice how this auto VPN option appears when we do that and that allows us to have security director set up auto VPN. And if you're unsure what that is with any of these, you can just mouse over these uh, question marks, these blue circles with white question marks, and you can see, like with this, spokes need to be added dynamically without making any configuration change on the hub device. You know, with that, we're, that's not what we're trying to do here, so we're going to move on. We're able to select the VPN profile. We have some predefined ones. You can see that specified by the system after it, and then the custom one. 
that you can see is assigned to the global domain. So we're going to select that custom, that LD VPN profile, and then we have the pre-share key options. With this, we can use auto generate or manual, and we're going to use auto generate here because it gives us this really kind of unique option here. And this generate unique key per tunnel. This is not something you're going to find in the CLI. This is something that security director is going to do for you. And what this does, it's going to generate a unique pre-show key per tunnel. So, you know, all the hub and spoke tunnels that we have set up and granted, we're going to have two coming from the hub device going to the individual spoke devices. But what this does, I mean, you could have hundreds possibly. What this actually does is this adds a layer of security by randomizing that key. If one tunnel was compromised for some reason, all of your tunnels aren't compromised. That gives you the added layer of security. So we'll continue on from there. And then here we can select the devices. We're going to select these two devices, branch one, branch two, and set or use the add as endpoint. And that's going to configure them as spoke devices. So keep that in mind. Even though it doesn't say spoke, it says endpoint, or it's represented by a red E, that means that it's a spoke device. And we're going to add the HQ device as a hub. All right, so with this, we have the next set of options, the tunnel settings option. We have unnumbered and numbered. Unnumbered means that you're not going to apply an IP address to the actual ST0 interface. However, in our example, we're, we're going to use the numbered interface. It's actually recommended that you always use a numbered interface unless you have some specific reason not to. And we're going to give the IP subnet to use, and that's going to pull IP addresses from that subnet to apply to those ST0 units that we're going to be using. And then we have this number of spoke devices per tunnel. Now if we were to select specify values and say we set this to 5 and we had 10 spokes, then what happens here is for every 5 spokes that try to connect to the hub device or that are connecting to the hub device, we're going to create a different ST0 logical unit. And this allows you to create different policies perhaps to manage or control the different traffic going into those different ST0 units. And so in our example, if we had 10, and we select 5 here, we would have two ST0 units, 0 and 1, appear on the hub device. But in our case, we're not going to do that. We'll just delete that and set that back to all. So we only have one ST0 interface that gets created. And then we have this, the uh, route settings. With these route settings, we can have static, OSPF, RIP, or we can say no routing. With this, we're just going to use static routing. We're going to set allow spoke-to-spoke -spoke communication. And so this is going to allow the spokes to communicate with each other through the hub. OK, so then next we have the global settings options. Here we can configure the external interface. With the hub device, we're going to set that to loopback 0. And what this is, this external interface, is the interface that's going to send and receive IKE packets. And the tunnel zone, what we can do here is we can select an existing zone or we can create a new zone. And this creates a new zone on the SRX device or the hub device in this instance. It could be a spoke device as well, but that will actually allow you to manage that traffic. This is where the SD0 interface will be placed. Then after that, we select the protected zones. We're only doing the one zone here, trust, but this is specifying which zone are you going to allow, you know, which addresses, which networks are you going to allow, you know, so the networks associated with the interfaces in that zone to communicate through the uh, VPN. And then with the spoke, we're going to select the Giggy one interface, and we're just going to select the untrust zone for the spokes, and then we're going to select the trust zone as well. Then let's continue on, and here you can review anything. You can make changes. For example, if this book device needed a different external interface, we could select it here. We don't need that right now, so we're just going to continue on. Click Finish, and that completes the configuration. However, now we do need to publish this, publish an update to the devices, and we're going to do that right away. And you can see that finished. So let's jump to the CLI. All right, so here's the CLI of the HQ device. Let's look at the IKE security associations. We can see the SAs are up, they look good. Let's look at the IPsec, so this is phase one, phase two. Everything looks good there. Jump to branch one. We're good there, just checking it from both sides. Looking good. Everything looks well. So let's actually try to send traffic through the tunnel. 
So here is the actual host device, and this is the hosts are split up on one device in routing instances. So we're going to try to ping the uh, the branch one device or the host behind branch one from the host on branch two. Looks good there, no problems whatsoever. So actually, let's try the host behind HQ. Looks good there. Let's try few more pings here. This is pinging from the branch one host to the branch two host. Everything looks great, no problems. And then from the branch one host to the HQ host, looking good there. And then let's check out the HQ host here, pinging from the HQ host. This is going to the branch one host. Okay, we're able to ping just fine there. And last but not least, that went a little fast because I was copying and pasting those commands, but you can see this last command we pinged from the HQ host, that's going to the branch 2 host. So we're able to ping great, but let's actually make sure that traffic is going through the tunnels. We see we have traffic going through the tunnels, and the thing to keep in mind when something goes from branch device to branch device, it's got to go through the IPsec VPN, so it's going to count that there because it's going to decrypt it and then encrypt it again as it goes through. See, we have traffic going through as well there. And traffic there as well. We're looking really good. Things are what they're supposed to look like here. That's great. Okay, one other quick thing to go over here. Let's talk about removing the VPN. So let's delete VPN. Yeah, let's delete it. Okay, so it's deleting it. You know, you want to remove a VPN from a device. So let's go ahead and go to the actual uh, CLI again. Okay, we're back to the CLI. You know, it may take a, a minute or so to do the commit, but let's check this out. Let's just look at the configuration. Uh, security IPsec. That's still there. Now, you know, wait a few more seconds. Well, instead of waiting more time, I'm going to let you know that it's not actually removing it from the device. You need to update the security devices. So let's jump back to the GUI to security director. We can go here, and then if we scroll over, we'll go into the security director devices we're going to see that there's actually some pending configurations. Pending services, we have these installed services, you know, it's the VPN, but we're pending removing them. So what we can actually do here, we can select Actions, and select Update All SD Change Devices, and then select the VPN service type, which is already done. We can see here the job is in progress. Alright, that job's done, so let's jump back to the CLI. Alright, here's the CLI. Let's, let's look at this again see that configuration has been removed. Let's make sure IKE, yep, configuration has been removed there too. Check in here, yep, IKE is removed. IPsec, definitely gone. And gone as well there. So that's the thing to keep in mind. when you, If you do remove a VPN policy, you still have to update the devices. And it's that way with any policy in Security Director. You may be able to remove it, but just because you remove it in Security Director doesn't mean that it's been removed in the managed devices. You have to go through and update those managed devices. All right, that brings us to the end of this learning bite. You know, we talked about configuring Hub and Spoke VPN, and we talked about you know verifying that, monitoring that on those managed devices, and so. Uh, that brings us to the end, and as always, uh, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community. From forums to social media, join the discussion.